Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about the use of system CTL command which will help us to list the various system daemons and services and to control those system daemon and services. So the command that we are going to focus is system CTL which is a command to manage the various units that are running in the system. Now the most common unit that is running is a service. A service is a combination of one or more daemons. Now what is daemon? A daemon is a process which runs in the background. Now why we require such daemons or why we require such processes? We require them to control certain processes. For example, if we want to control the web server, then we need to run a daemon which will automatically start that web server the moment the system boots up. So all the daemons, they start automatically at the runtime. So whenever you start your system, the daemons will automatically start running in the background. Now how to identify a daemon? So whenever you list the running processes, the daemon will end with a D. So the names end with the D. So we'll focus more on these daemons in this particular lecture. So whenever you want to check the status of a unit or a service, you want to check whether it is running or not, whether it is installed or not. For all these types of queries, we will use the system CTL command. And the very basic command that we use with system CTL is status. So we want to check the status of any service. So we will write system CTL space status space the name of the service. I will show you this how to do it. Now we will get four types of output. The key things in the output will be we need to identify whether the service is running, stopped, is enabled or disabled. So we will get one of these four outputs. One is first one is active. Active means that the service is running. Inactive means that it is not running. Enabled means that the service will automatically start once the system boots up. Disabled means you will have to explicitly start the service whenever you want. So the running status is different from enabled. Enabled may be running, may be stopped. The key point to remember is if the service automatically starts when the system boots up, it is enabled. If it doesn't start automatically, then it is disabled. So let me show you this. So let us check the status system CTL status of a service SSHT. So you can see here it is active and running. So it is there in the green. Another point to notice here is so active tells where the service is running enabled. So this is another point to note here enabled enabled means so you can see I have just used the command. I have not started this service. So how it automatically start because the status is enabled. So we will learn how to disable it, how to swap the service just in a little while. Press Q to come out of it. Now the system CTL command, there are certain options that you can use. The first one is is active. So is active, the output will tell you whether the service is active or not. Second one is is enabled. So the output is just going to tell you whether the service is enabled or not list units. So here you can see all the units of a specific type. For example, you want to see all the units of the type service. Then you can use list units hyphen hyphen type and you specify the type. So it can be service, it can be sockets, whatever you want to check. Third one is, fourth one is start. Start means if the service is stopped, you want to start it. So you want to make it active. The next is stop. So if you want to stop a running service, then you can use the stop option along with the system CTL command. Restart is a combination of start, stop and start. So if you want to stop and then again start the service, simply you can use the restart option. Enable as I have told you will make the service automatically start at the boot time and disable you will have to manually start the service at boot time. So let's see all of these one by one. So the very first thing is, is active. System CTL and you use SSHT. So the output says active. So this means this particular service is active by default. The second one is, is enabled. So system CTL 
is enabled sshd so yes this service is enabled so it is active as well as enabled so this was also checked by us by using status so status will tell you everything in one single command now let us see if how to stop this so system ctl you have to be the root user to use this command now stop sshd now recheck the status so you can see that it is inactive now still enabled but is inactive once again if you want to activate it use start again check the status and you can see that the active is running now status is running next was to disable it system ctl disable and then the service name if i recheck the status so now you see here it is disabled running but disabled so the meaning is once you will shut down the system and restart it the service will not automatically start to run it will be stop you will have to explicitly do it so this i will leave up to you i have told you how to change the status to disabled just shut down your system restart it and you will see that this service will not run on its own you will have to start the service next one is if you want to list the units type service so here you can see all the units of type service if i omit the service part so here it will show you all the units irrespective of the type so everything that is running in the system will be listed here the most important point to remember in this is you need to be able to start a service and enable that service because at times we require to download certain packages after downloading the packages we will have to enable that particular service and also start it so if you don't know the concept how to start a service then even if you have downloaded it you will not be able to make use of it so the key three uh, aspects of system ctl is to check the status start the service and enable the service so that was all related to the system ctl command in the next video we will talk about the network time protocol